joy for me to be here again looking at the letter to Galatians. This is most probably one of the first letters by Paul, one of the first Christian writings that we have in the New Testament. By around AD 49, Paul penned this letter and we in the 21st century face several issues but the first century church, the issue was slightly different. Galatians 3.28 is a significant verse to understand this book. 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now the issue that Paul's church faced was disunity. Disunity based on ethnicity. Jewish people claimed themselves to be the pure line, the called ones. When Gentiles came into the church, both believed in Jesus. Jewish people also believed in Jesus. Gentiles also believed in Jesus. But somehow... There was the sense of pride, ethnocentrism, spiritual pride. Gentiles coming in and Jewish people developed this attitude of looking down on them. They told Gentiles, you first become like us for God to accept you. This was the issue. Now I told you last week, Paul could have neglected that. Paul could have just said, which church is perfect? Or Jewish people, you also believe in Jesus? That is enough. But you look at Paul's response. He took it in a very serious note. He was intolerant. In chapter 1, 8, chapter 2, 6, chapter 2, 6 and all, you get the feel of this letter right at chapter 1, verse 1 itself. Let me read it. 1.1, 1, 1, Paul an apostle, sent not from men, nor by a man. The feel of the letter is displayed in 1.1 1, 1 itself. He is not tolerant. He is not looking for middle grounds here. He is not asking Jewish people, come, let's have settlement. No. Because they have added to the gospel. Now for Paul, it is very clear in his mind, faith in Jesus is enough for a person to be accepted by God. But when Jewish people, a word that repeats in this letter is confused. The Jewish people confuse the Gentiles. And that is how the Gentile people are at the verge of giving up. If you look at chapter 5 and verse 2, they have not given themselves completely, but 5.2 says they are at the verge of. Look at that 5.2. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you all. So now, I told you last week, Paul is on his way to Jerusalem to address it in a detailed manner, but he cannot wait. In between, after the first missionary journey, before the Jerusalem council, he dashed this letter off because he cannot tolerate. And I rededicated my life when I was studying this. We should also be like that. These days also scriptures are distorted. Scriptures are diluted for personal gain. One of the reasons why these people were doing that is chapter 417. Chapter 417, why these people were coming and adding to the gospel? 417 says, those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. They wanted followers. They were scared of their position. They thought, we are going to lose power. If Paul is saying belief in Jesus is enough, then who are we? We will also become like Gentiles. Then we will all have a common ground. Jewish people, because of their ethnic pride, they said, no, we are up there. You are here. We have been given the Mosaic law. We are the Abraham's descendants. If you want to be like us, make sure you are circumcised, observe special day. This is the context. This is the context of Paul writing this. And there are a lot of applications for us today. Maybe we may not face something like this ethnic 
division based division but gospel sometimes you know the prosperity gospel the hyper grace all that we should not be people who listen and say yeah it is not my business let them say something no we should be people who take time and try to confront people based on the scriptures that is the way that paul does intolerant and he was burdened now on one side you see paul saying i don't care who are the people out there in jerusalem that's the kind of tone coming in chapter 2 and verse 6 as for those who are held in high esteem whatever they were makes no difference to me so you kind of see that paul is arrogant here whatever they are makes no difference to me but you should think of paul with this chapter 4 verse 19 in your mind i think we all should have a balance here when we are out there to correct people when we stand when we have that feeling of i am standing for the truth this should be our attitude on one side uncompromising intolerant but on other side 419 let me remind you once again my dear children this is how he addresses and for whom i am again in the pains of child birth now if you are coming from a family where your dear ones maybe your close relatives you know they are in a wrong track maybe they are into prosperity gospel and what is your response now you know from the scriptures discipleship is costly jesus did not die to make us rich in material terms you know it now what is the attitude when we confront somebody you should be burdened maybe pray sufficiently before you go and encounter that person with truth that is what we are gathering from paul's response now today let's get into the lesson i would like to give a title for today's lesson who are the people of god that is a main issue here marks of the covenant community marks of the covenant community how do you know that this is a group of people that is part of the covenant now these are languages that we may find difficult but for first century people their whole thinking is covenant covenant god made a covenant with abraham now it looks like paul is saying that is obsolete god is doing something new now the struggle is who are that people of god i am inviting you to look at the heart of this letter the heart of this letter commences in chapter 2 verse 15 following there are three marks that will not go wrong even today this three we keep in mind we all are in safe zone marks of true people of god 215 onwards it starts like this we who are jews by birth and not sinful gentiles we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in jesus christ we too have put our faith in christ jesus that we may be justified by faith in christ and not by works of the law because by the works of the law no one will be justified very important three verses not only in this letter in the entire new testament what is the mark of a covenant community true mark of people of god that church or that individual will be gospel focused now that is a word that repeats in this letter chapter 2 verse 5 we did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel now this is the phrase used in this letter truth of the gospel again chapter 2 verse 14 when i saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel now the question is what is the truth of the gospel because paul is making a big deal here truth of the gospel truth of the gospel i will not compromise with the truth of the gospel and i am telling you an individual is on track if he is gospel centered if he is truly centered around that truth what is the truth 
the truth of the gospel is a person is justified by faith not by works of the law that is the truth of the gospel now here in this context that word justification comes in chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 thrice what does that word mean because that is not a word that we may use on a daily basis but it's a very crucial word in the understanding of salvation 16 itself know that a person is not justified and then again so we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified now this vocabulary justification comes from a legal context it's like a law court word what does that mean to declare somebody that you are in the right it's a relational term if you say in the first century people first century people would have understood it as oh Gentiles are declared to be righteous meaning they are declared to be justified meaning they are right with God that is the simple meaning of justification you are declaring somebody you are in the right you were not right now you are right by a declaration how did that happen when you put your faith in Jesus you are justified you are brought into a relationship with Jesus by your faith not by works of the law now this is the conflict in the first century in the church of Galatians this is the conflict why Paul had to say again and again not by works of the law not by works of the law because like many of the believers today Jewish people were at the error of self-righteousness they tried to establish their righteousness by works Romans 10.3 is a verse that addresses the same issue. Maybe it's a good idea to look at Romans 10 and verse 3. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own righteousness. It's a big error. When Paul looks at Jewish people and their superior feeling, of establishing their righteousness if it is that if this is that Galatian church you can easily identify Pharisees they would be standing tall God has to give me a place I am right with God because I have fasted twice last week because every month I take three-day fasting and here is the poor Gentile coming and sitting poor Gentile has no ancestry to boast about Poor Gentile would say, yeah, three months back, I accepted Jesus as my personal savior. And Jewish person would behave as a senior. This is the error. And Paul says, look at chapter 2 verse 15. Come along with me, 2 15 once again. We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles. Mark that verse. Who are this we? Who are we talking about? Whom is Paul addressing here? Now you know, this chapter 215 onwards is connected with the previous verses the issue is Paul on one side Cephas and Barnabas on the other side that is the issue issue that happened in Antioch over food and Jewish people had strict law you cannot eat with Gentiles and what did Cephas do Cephas if you look at chapter 2 verse 12 look at chapter 2 12 for before certain men came from James who is James he is like a bishop in Jerusalem before some people came from James he used to eat with Gentiles who Cephas Peter used to sit and eat with Gentiles meaning in his mind the theology was right according to him he had taken off the baggage before certain men from Jerusalem came, Cephas is sitting with, to put it in a little more easier way, if somebody looks at Cephas eating with Gentiles, what is the message there? If you are the person, you are seeing Cephas eating with Gentiles, what is the message? The message is, they are also justified. Otherwise, who will become like a sinner? Cephas. 
Cephas is breaking the law. But Cephas knew. Cephas was 100% convinced. His theology was right. Now, Gentiles are also accepted. I cannot claim superiority here. I have no problem in sitting and eating with Gentiles. He was doing that. But from certain men came from Jerusalem. What happened? He just withdrew. And in verse 13, verse 13, 2, 13, the other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy. What is the issue here? The church has to be gospel focused, meaning stand for the truth of the gospel. What is the truth of the gospel? Don't bring any tradition in. You are justified by faith. That is the issue here. Now Cephas and others are bringing their tradition in. They have withdrawn. And the moment they are withdrawing, what is the message to the Gentiles? You are not good enough. That is the message. The moment when Cephas is withdrawing, he is protecting himself. In front of whom? In front of James' party. In front of Jerusalem, people, Cephas is protecting his holy face. But it is a message to the Gentiles, you are not qualified, good enough. You have to become like me for me to sit with you. That is the scenario here. Gospel focus means, my dear people of God, sometimes this error can come in without even we realizing. All of us should know this. We are not justified because we have done something for the Lord. We are justified by faith. And this faith is also a gift, says Ephesians 2.10. So none of the people in the church in the first century or now can claim I am accepted because I am from this family background. I am accepted because I read Bible and attended Sunday school. No, 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 no. That is not the basis. We are not justified by works of the law. For them, works of the law was mainly circumcision, food law, observing special days. But for us, there are a lot of other traditions. Sunday school is a good thing in itself. But don't puff your child up. Create a sense of pride. Oh, when he grows up, he will have that pride. Yeah, I have finished the Sunday school course. Now I am a candidate. Acceptable to God because from childhood. And some mothers and fathers, they end up saying this. Creating that sense of pride. Yeah, he, when he was three years old, four years old itself, even we are surprised. We don't know how he started praying. Yeah, before, without prayer, he will not eat. We didn't teach him how to pray. He is just doing that. You know what is happening when you say that? Without your knowledge, that superiority feeling that Jewish people had, you are injecting. For all the parents, let me tell you, if your children are walking in godliness, it is grace. It is not because you are very strict. It is not because you have given them a conducive atmosphere. There were several people who were given good atmosphere and environment. They did not make it. We are justified. We are declared righteous. Not because, and Paul is saying, we who are Jews by birth, we know. We who are Jews, meaning that is a phrase Used for covenant community. We who are Jews, the superior ones, even we know. We are in covenant, not because we have done something. Why did God establish a covenant with Abraham? Because Abraham was good? For us, when we look back in Genesis 17, 15, and the rest of the verse, chapters, you know, it was not because Abraham was the best person available. Even after God choosing him, he ended up lying. In fact, somebody put it beautifully. You see the call of Abraham in Genesis 12. Genesis 12 is a significant chapter because Genesis 1 to 11 is the problem of humanity. Problem of disobedience. Problem of wickedness. Problem of bringing dishonor to God. 11 chapters will set the stage for the rest of the Bible. If somebody understands Genesis 1 to 11, they understood what is the problem of humanity. Adam and Eve. 
Cain and Abel and with flood narrative. You know, this is the problem. Human beings are not capable of glorifying God because their own interest comes in between. And chapter 12, God is choosing Abraham as a solution to the problem. 111, 1 to 11 is problem. 12 onwards is solution. Now you look at the solution. The solution, Abraham, is also part of problem. He ends up lying. He looks at the wife and says, she's my sister. This is the scenario. And now the descendants are having that superiority and Paul is correcting it. We who are Jews by birth, covenant community, we know we are not justified. We are not declared to be members of the covenant because we have done something. It was grace. Even in the Old Testament, God's covenant community is chosen by grace. We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles. That phrase refers to people who don't have law. Outside of the covenant, we know that a person is not justified by works of the law. Now, here is when I want to make a brief comment on law. Jewish people had certain things to say because who had given them law? It is God who has given them law. Sometimes it happens in our life too. If we are not able to discern the ways of God, we may end up fighting against God. Very significant for us to understand. Law is given to Jewish people by God himself, but they are not able to see the ways of God. Paul had to argue again and again in chapter 3. He says, chapter 321, look at 321. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? After Paul saying, you are not justified by works of the law, Paul is saying, so is law against God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, meaning law was not given to impart life. Law was given by God, but the purpose of the law was not to impart life. It was given so that people will realize they need a savior. That was the purpose of law. When you have the law, Jewish people were given law so that they will be preserved as a community. Also, they will know, I am not able to fulfill this. I need a savior. That was the purpose. In fact, Romans 5, the last verse is disturbing at times when we look at it. Look at Romans 5, the last uh, 20 and 21. Romans 5, 20 and 21. What is the purpose of the law? Why it was given in the first place? The law was brought in so that trespasses might increase. That's why the law was given. Yes, there is a sense of restrictive function, but don't miss it. Law is given in the first place. Jewish people, when you are under the law, you will realize you need a savior. But the very thing that was meant to lead people to Christ has now become a hindrance for them to look at Christ alone. The mixed law with Christ. Romans 5, it is to increase. And in back to Galatians, Galatians 3.23, interesting verse when it comes to the purpose of the law. Why law was given? Law is not against God, against the purposes of God. Law was given at one point in salvation history. Law had a function. But now Christ has come. What Paul is saying is, why you are bringing this thing here? Christ has come. The fulfillment has come. Chapter 323, very important verse in our understanding of law. Before the coming of this faith, that faith is referring to Jesus. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law. What happened people under the law? It was like a custody. Locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. The law was our guardian. Look at that. Verse 24, the law was our guardian until Christ came. That is what is important there. That word until. Now Christ has come. Christ has come. There is a new beginning in salvation history. But the Jewish people, they don't want to give up the sense of pride. They are saying, you should become like us. Again, taking people back. 
this is exactly the problem in chapter 4 also look at chapter 4 verse 9 but now that you know god or rather are known by god how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces law is portrayed as weak and miserable when christ has come what paul is saying is don't go back you want to be under that custody you want to be under that guardian when you have a father here when you are set free that's a language of chapter 5 verse 1 maybe it's a popular verse that we use out of context sometimes 5 1 it is for freedom that christ has set us free stand firm do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery do not be burdened do not turn back do not come under those miserable principles do not come under the law in such a way that you are again feeling helpless you need only christ gospel what is gospel at the heart of it gospel is justified declaration you are declared to be in the right with god by faith in jesus nothing more nothing less we should uphold this truth today let none of us fall into the error of pharisees where we are not able to accept another person he also has faith in jesus but he is not looking like us maybe the dress or maybe the hairstyle or maybe the foot or whatever his ethnicity or let us not bring that in and look down on them faith in jesus is that carpet rule if somebody has faith in jesus they are accepted they are in right with god now why paul is saying this that's very important in chapter 2 verse 15 and 16 why is paul saying we who are jewish people we know that what paul is saying is act according to what you know you know that you are not chosen because of what you have done you are chosen by grace why is paul saying that this is what i learned there paul is pushing for this justification by faith by grace justification by faith by grace why because when we know that we are saved by grace we will extend grace that is why learn that big principle when we know that we are saved by grace we will extend grace that is what happened to pharisees the error self-righteousness trying to establish their own right standing then you cannot show mercy they you cannot show grace because you are thinking that you are standing by your own effort then how you will extend grace to another person that is the summary of the discussion of justification paul is challenging cephas barnabas come out of hypocrisy don't try to protect yourself as somebody big earlier i was there the covenant member no come out of that hypocrisy you know that you are not having this standing because you have done something accept the other when you know that you are saved by grace you will extend grace to others a church covenant community is true the true mark is gospel focus when you see a community where there is division based on ethnicity social status gender that is not a covenant community if you see a group of people they say they are following jesus but you walk into that place rich and poor division is there Jew Gentile for our language super spiritual lost spiritual division gender biases we have not understood the gospel it's as simple as that covenant community the mark is it will be gospel focused when you are gospel focused what is the result the result is unity all have faith in Jesus everybody will say only one thing I am saved by grace he is also saved by grace I am from this family he is from that family but we have only one thing to say as Paul say one faith one baptism we have only one thing divorced about 
there is no superior inferior thing in the community of faith moving on quickly the second mark chapter 2 verse 20 21 first is gospel focused second the true covenant community will be christ centered chapter 2 20 21 i have been crucified with christ paul says and i no longer live but christ lives in me the life i now live very interesting he says christ lives in me but the next sentence is the life that i now live so it's not a passive thing christ lives in me i don't know what is happening no i no longer live christ lives in me the life i now live christ lives in me but i am living the life that i live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself up for me closely see what is happening what is paul saying after establishing that all are justified not by works not by any kind of activities he established that in chapter 2 verse 15 16 and he is moving on now when do you know that you are justified accepted by faith what is the next step sunday after sunday coming and saying lord thank you for saving me that is the response or when we hear a song thank you for the cross lift up our hands and say lord i don't deserve this but thank you no the next step is christ centered individually community wise it will be christ centered because we are justified by faith the response is as paul said i have been crucified with christ what does that mean to understand that we need verse 19 also look at verse 19 for through the law i died to the law so that i might live for god how did Paul die? What does that mean? This verse needs explanation, interpretations. Through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. Through the law, I died to the law. How? What does that mean? It means somebody died through the law or under the law. How do you know? Chapter 3, verse 13. Look at 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us 313 is important to understand 219 through the law i died to the law meaning jesus christ in chapter 4 the language is when the time has set christ has come born under the law to redeem those under the law now jesus came lived a sinless life but took on the sin of humanity on himself whatever punishment was there under the law he took on himself jesus christ died through the law meaning the curse of the law came upon him now you look at 219 once again let's read that let's try to understand that through the law i died to the law meaning through the law, Jesus Christ was punished. The punishment of the law came on Jesus. He became a curse. And Paul is saying, through the law, I died to the law. How did I die? By crucifying myself with Christ. How did Paul die? I have been crucified with Christ. Meaning, when world saw only jesus there i identify myself in that crucifixion and you know baptism is not just washing and coming back baptism is significant that symbolizes this act of death burying coming out in symbolic way you are identifying with christ paul is saying i have been crucified with christ meaning somebody was a substitute for me now i identify with it i have been crucified when jesus was there i was there jesus was representing me now hold the curse of the law is dealt with on the cross 
now i no longer live christ lives meaning i am coming as a new creation we should not stop with i am justified by faith we have to move on to i no longer live all the curse under the law fell on jesus i have been crucified with him now i no longer live christ lives in me the life i now live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself up for me what does that mean how can we unpack this i no longer live meaning the egocentric paul i no longer live that is what it means paul with all jewish prejudice i no longer live it is not egocentric paul it is christ centered paul who is going to live from now on i have been crucified with christ i no longer live that old superior jewish ethnocentric paul egocentric paul i no longer live christ lives in me christ lives in me meaning what to understand that we have to come to chapter 3 verse 26 where paul unpacks this for us it is a struggle to understand think about the early christian they also will be struggling what is it i've been crucified with christ i no longer live so paul explains these concepts in chapter 326 so in christ jesus you are all children of god through faith so what paul is saying is i am not a child of god because i am a jew I am a child of God because I have been crucified with Christ now Christ lives in me Christ gives me a new identity We are all children of God through faith for all of you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ now the identity changes before they have clothed themselves with Jewishness with circumcision with food law with sabbath when somebody looks at paul or any other jew they are clothed well and what do people see they see jew they see tradition they see ethnicity all around culture law now paul is saying i have been crucified with christ and now i am a new creation i am clothed with christ the righteousness of christ the new identity the new clothing and what is the immediate application christ centered meaning what your identity is jesus the immediate application is 328 there is neither jew nor gentile gospel creates a community which has only one thing to boast about faith in jesus just like that Christ centeredness also creates a community for in Christ you are all children of God through faith and immediate application is there is neither Jew nor Gentile the same thing continues there I want you to look at that verse again 220 it creates a new identity the very fact that i have been crucified with christ i no longer live christ lives in me i am clothed with christ new identity at the same time I no longer live but Christ lives in me also has a connotation of new creation it's not only new identity i am made new in ethical sense the old paul is not only jewish paul the old paul who tried to destroy the church been crucified now i no longer that old sinful tried to destroy the church i no longer live christ lives meaning there is a new creation a new beginning this is affirmed by 5 6 look at chapter 5 6 of galatians 5 6 for in christ look at that word very very important word for in christ when somebody is believing in death and resurrection of jesus for in christ neither circumcision no circumcision has any value paul is saying jewish people gentiles you come you accept jesus and you have no value whether you are circumcised no circumcised has no value but what is the matter that counts look at it the only thing that counts is faith 
expressing itself through love new creation is marked by love how do you know that a person is living christ centered life only one test it's not tradition it's not by how well a person can pray it is not how well a person can sing or preach when a person say i no longer live christ lives in me the immediate test is his faith in jesus is it expressed in love and what kind of a love we have to go back to 220 the second part 220 it says very clearly the life i now live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me who loved me and gave himself for me that love so my dear people of god is just a matter of few hours for us to come and study these things we are studying galatians and i hope all of you will be able to say some things about galatians yeah jew gentile conflict is there and paul is responding in a way very intolerant burdened and today we are saying justification that is the truth of the gospel and you cannot add to it all of it theoretically we know it here but let me challenge all of us if we are people who are justified by faith justified by faith in jesus we have nothing to boast if you're all saying that yeah pastor i have nothing to boast it's not because i was born a christian i am not justified because i know a lot of scripture i am justified because christ declared me to be in the right when i put my faith if you are that person come up what is your response now what is my response now is my response only preaching teaching singing paul is pushing us come up allow christ to shape your attitude and choices what kind of an attitude of christ the one who loved me and gave himself for me that new creation the new creation who is willing to go the extra mile like christ and this 5 6 once again i'll read it and i'll show another verse that paul is saying the same thing again in christ you are not only getting a new identity you are made as a new creature it's a new creation altogether 5 6 once again for in christ neither circumcision nor circumcision has any value don't argue on the basis of ethnicity then what is that the only thing that counts when we are here today the only thing that counts is faith we put our faith that faith expressing itself through love now what is the test that a person's faith is genuine because all christendom claim they all have faith in jesus what is the test of true faith how do you know that a person's faith is correct genuine how only one test see whether the person has love 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 is the test for true faith this is exactly what james said james is in no way contradicting paul some people say james is contradicting paul what is james saying faith without works is dead some people look at 2 15 16 and say paul said we are justified by faith not by works james is saying faith without works is dead paul is not contradicting james or james contradicting paul we have to see the letter in its context when paul is saying we are justified by faith not by works paul is not against good works paul is against works that puffs you up self righteousness that work particularly in the first century the jewish identity markers that is what paul was confronting paul is not against good works in fact good work to be more precise love is the sign that that person's faith is genuine here james is affirming faith without works is dead so we have to really think a church an individual 
is not just a matter of yeah i am very gospel focused i believe that i am saved by faith i am saved justified by faith no no wait a minute do you see that faith expressed through love if faith and in all the pauline letters you would see this every now and then faith love hope this three comes together every time paul cannot think of one without the other it's like that it's like two sides of the same coin faith by faith you are justified now what happens with love i express just like christ loved me and gave himself up for me i'm not making this big thing out of 5 6 alone look at chapter 6 verse 15 paul has the same thing to say when you are saying i am crucified with christ what happens 615 neither circumcision nor circumcision means anything exactly what you see so in 56 56 also we have seen circumcision nor circumcision doesn't matter same thing again in 615 neither circumcision nor circumcision means anything what counts is the new creation and what is that new creation how do you know that a person is regenerated new creation you look at the way he love another person loving one another is the sign that a person is christ centered we are living in a very different time there are several people who don't go to church i have had the opportunity to interact with somebody like that i asked him why why brother you're not going to church good christian good believer for him Galatians 2:15 and 16 he will uphold it any night you wake him up you believe in Jesus he would get up and say i am justified by faith not by works i spent some time with him why are you not going to church you know what he said if i go to church only the problem comes we see somebody who is struggling financially then we have to give there was a person will not mention the church and all that again i knew personally there was a phenomenal regular phenomenon he used to leave before the church benediction was pronounced every day 12:30 the church ends pastor goes up for closing prayer benediction this guy will regularly leave right after the sermon is over he leaves and all the church believers used to think about what's happening with this person if somebody leaves one sunday to catch a bus or train that is different but why is he always coming late and leaving early somebody went spoke to him why is that you can stay back for a few minutes have a cup of coffee and talk to one another he says if i stay like that then somebody who is coming to my location i have to give them also a lift in the car look at that but a good christian in his own eyes because chapter 2 15 16 is true with him i am justified by faith now wait a minute what is the sign that your faith is genuine justified by faith the genuinity of that faith is shown in love circumcision not circumcision paul said doesn't matter what matters is new creation has your values changed have we become new inside out because before the regeneration it's all me 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 it's for me my family praying for me fasting for me my children my car my building now you put your faith in jesus you know christ life has to shape my life how did christ live he lived for others he loved us gave himself up now i have to do the same thing faith expressing itself through love now for many people faith and works are opposites faith or works that is devil's scheme it is faith and works i'm not talking about salvation for salvation faith alone but for person who has faith genuine faith then this is not opposite if you have genuine faith then love is manifested in your life because of the genuinity of faith even in romans not turn there there is a phrase there obedience that comes from faith 
you cannot detach i have faith and give no importance to work when paul is saying we are justified by faith he is not saying work is not important for salvation faith alone but people who are saved put their trust faith in jesus they have to come up gospel focused second is christ centered meaning a new identity meaning new creation meaning faith expressing itself through love the third most important look at it gospel focused christ centered third is spirit filled and how beautifully paul writes this this is the heart of this letter chapter 2 verse 15 16 talks about justification gospel chapter 2 19 20 21 talks about christ centered chapter 3 1 onwards it is about spirit filled how it is all lined up one after the other justification by faith christ centeredness spirit filled and look at chapter 3 verse 2 i would like to learn just one thing from you paul the pastor is saying believers especially in particular to gentiles he is saying i would like to learn just one thing from you what is that one thing did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard what is the context of it paul is saying gentiles gentile believers are you so naive why you want to go and do the circumcision food law again did you receive the spirit because you obeyed the law or did you receive the spirit after you believed what is the answer there after they believed they didn't do anything they just put their faith in jesus and they were filled with the holy spirit and paul is saying when spirit was poured out on you didn't you realize you were accepted in the family do you need to do works now to show the world that i am a jew i am doing this i am doing that spirit is it enough argument is the same faith is enough christ is enough now spirit is enough don't add anything to faith don't add anything to christ centeredness christ is enough now spirit is enough why you want to go and have another identity of ethnicity did you receive the spirit meaning what paul is saying is you have got the proof that you are accepted to god's family and how that god's family looks like no ethnicity is the basis there gender inequal nothing spirit comes on all flesh paul is saying don't you know when spirit was poured upon on you don't you know that you are part of a new family now this is where i want to say one more thing in fact what paul says is in chapter 2 is when he initiates that discussion you have received spirit don't go back and do all this to impress god god is already pleased with you that's why he has poured out his spirit upon you 214 is where it will challenge so many so many so many preachers these days what is there in 314 he redeemed us who jesus redeemed us in order that the blessing given to abraham might come to the gentiles through christ jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the spirit back then jewish people confused gentiles by saying what they told gentiles now it is right that you have put your faith in jesus gentiles but abraham's blessing is there to receive abraham's blessing what you should do you should come under the law you should put on circumcision you should have dietary laws then you will be blessed like abraham abraham had lot of servants abraham had lot of cattle all this blessing it is reserved only for jewish people gentile people you are coming and saying i am saved hallelujah but don't you want blessing abraham's blessing of servants of all the material thing you accept circumcision then you will get it these days also people go around and saying abraham's blessing we are blessed 
like abraham and what is the application for that application is where we struggle abraham had blessing and he had x number of servants but we want to leave one or maximum two to come and help us in the house abraham had blessing and he had cattle do we want cattle no we want fixed deposits abraham had descendants how many descendants do we want 1 2 3 then ah, it's spiritual okay so descendants are spiritual then what about this wealth oh, that is material wealth this is distortion this is distortion of scriptures abraham's blessing is redefined here in 314 it is not physical it is not material it is not what you can see with your eyes it is not what you can touch with your hands look at it i don't need to tell you this you only need to read carefully 314 paul is saying don't act in a stupid way god had put his spirit upon you and this people are telling you you need more blessing wait a minute spirit is the blessing that is what paul is saying in 314 he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to abraham will come to you gentiles and what is the blessing so that by faith we might receive the promise of the spirit my dear people of god those who are filled with the holy spirit this is the greatest gift you can ever receive from god if you are waiting for that moment of being filled with the holy spirit i'm encouraging you long for that because that is that moment where you would really feel i am blessed you need spirit to overcome the desires of the flesh in ephesians also paul says in chapter 1 verse 3 we are blessed in the heavenly realms with all spiritual blessings then a genuine question can come in your mind then how about car or house or god will not give me anything scripture says god will supply all your need seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and not all these things what is mentioned in the previous verse food clothing don't worry about that seek ye first his kingdom and these things food clothing that is promised that is given jesus said do not worry but god will make you super rich because abraham was rich that is a wrong theology if you are filled with the holy spirit be content with that reality spirit is the climax gospel focused christ centered spirit filled if you look at a church or an individual like that they are new covenant community spirit is given now spirit is the blessing that you can long for there is another thing you know how jewish people confuse this gentiles they confuse mainly in two different ways first thing they said is you want abraham's blessing you come under the law and paul is correcting that by saying no Abraham's blessing is already given to you don't go under the law second thing how they confuse this people is the argument of jewish people if you are not under the law you can imagine them speaking in galatian congregation so your pastor taught that you don't come under the law then tell me how do you know what is right and wrong galatian people are confused because paul has taught faith alone this people are coming and saying okay faith alone how do you know what is right and wrong without law in fact they said something which paul says in 217 look at 217 you know how they confuse this poor gentiles they said if you are not coming under the law then you know what christ is doing christ is promoting sin look at 217 but if in seeking to be justified in christ we jews find ourselves also among the sinners does in that mean that christ promotes sin this is what jewish people said if you are saying faith alone christ alone and you are saying don't come under the law then how do you know what is right and wrong against spirit filled 
Paul is bringing. Look at chapter 3 and verse 3. 3.2 3, talks about spirit as a blessing. 3.3 3 talks about something else. Look at 3.3. 3. Are you foolish? After beginning by means of the spirit. Meaning you started your Christian life by spirit. It is because of spirit working in you that faith was operated. After beginning with spirit, are you now trying to finish? Meaning, are you now trying to overcome the flesh by means of flesh? That flesh stands for mosaic law. Flesh is used in three different ways in Galatians. In chapter 1, it is used for just human flesh. In chapter 3, Verse 3, it stands for mosaic law. After beginning in the spirit, are you now trying to finish it by means of flesh meaning coming under the mosaic law? In chapter 5, flesh stands for, chapter 5, 16, flesh stands for the evil desires. Three different ways. Sarks, flesh is used in Galatians. Now Paul is saying, people have confused you and you are going to accept the law because you want to know what is right and wrong. You know what Paul said in chapter 5, verse 18? Again, the sufficiency of spirit, 518. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. What is Paul saying in Galatians? Spirit is enough. Christ is enough. Faith is enough. That is the message of Galatians. Faith is enough for you to be justified, to have a right relationship. Don't add any tradition. Christ is enough. Circumcision, no circumcision, don't worry. It has no value. What values is new creation. And the climax of the letter, spirit. If a person has the spirit, then you are blessed. Not only blessed, you would know what is right and wrong. Because spirit is there inside of you. If you are led by the spirit, and by the way, this word, you are led by the, this is the same phrase used for Old Testament walking according to law. If you are led by the law, Old Testament. Now, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, here again, problem is, a genuine believer can immediately say, so what are you saying? Spirit has taken over law. Now, law is not there. It is all opposites. It is not all opposites. If you look at chapter 5, verse 14, that will get clarified there. 5.14. How is spirit taking over the role of law here? 5.14. For the entire law. You put all the law, law, law together. Entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. What is that one command? Love your neighbor as yourself. And what is the first in the list fruit of the spirit first? Love. So spirit is not contradicting law. When you're filled with the spirit, fruit comes. And that fruit is affirming the law. The entire law is summed up in one command. Love your neighbor. And fruit of the spirit is love. There is a third thing. Third thing. With that we will wind up. We are talking about spirit now. We spoke about the sufficiency of faith in justification. We spoke about Christ-centeredness. Christ is enough. Now we are thinking of spirit. With regard to spirit, we have already looked at two angles. Spirit brings that blessing. We don't need to crave for anything more. Spirit is the blessing. Second, what we are looking is, spirit is enough to know what is right and wrong. If you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. Don't bring law here because it's a necessity. No. If spirit has come on you, spirit will fulfill the deepest longing of the law. Now there is a third thing here with spirit. And that is the crucial thing, my dear people of God. For Paul, he is writing this letter with all passion and fervor, all that, because of that one thing. In the Old Testament, as I told you, law was given for a particular period of time. And what did law do? You know what law did? Law divided the humanity into two. What we read in chapter 2, 15. We who are Jewish people by birth and Gentile sinners. Law divided humanity into two. No unity. But God always had in his mind 
he wanted a community in the world in genesis god created human beings the division was never for him the last and final thing law was just in between scenario but law divided now jewish people have a different mindset gentiles are feeling they are bad awkward outcast because of law now what paul is saying are you taking this people back to law then you are again going to have distorted community look at the language in chapter 5 verse 15 if you bite and devour each other where do you see this caution zoo zoo galatian church has become like a zoo biting and devouring each other based on what i have law you don't have law i am spiritual you have come just now to christ paul is saying if you bite and devour each other watch out or you will be destroyed by each other and 526 let us not be conceited paul says provoking and envying each other envying each other based on what law people who uphold law are feeling they are superior they are looking down on others provoking each other there are few people like that in every congregation provoke when did you accept jesus uh, for us it was 2015 only that is that provoking and they want you to ask them back when did you start coming to this church oh we are here for 20 years that is it for jewish people it was different for in the current scenario it is like this it will translate like that provoking envying if somebody go up to sing how can he go when i am a singer seated here that envy i am here for longer time you just came that attitude that destroys community paul is saying i cannot stand back i cannot wait for a few more months because this low business is going to destroy community you are provoking and envying each other destroying and the worst thing is chapter 6 verse 4 each one should test their own actions then they can take pride in themselves alone without uh, without comparing themselves to someone what does that mean you take pride in your own action each one should test their own action then they can take pride in themselves by not comparing with others meaning the literal meaning of that is don't make market for yourself by comparing you with others if you are in a good standing with god if you are christ focused spirit filled you move on your journey don't look at others and think that you are better that is the error the error is envying competitive spirit the sense of superiority that is what paul is breaking in galatians faith alone christ alone spirit alone the whole community is one when everybody says i am justified by faith I am Christ focused. I am spirit filled. Then nobody has anything to boast. Spirit is given. Christ is given to all. Faith is a gift to all. Then all are one. My dear people of God, it is my prayer even as we got a glimpse of Galatians, the first letter of Paul, the first writings, the main issue here is disunity. May we, none of us, I'm putting myself here. None of us. Let us not be agents of creating disunity. We should discern the scheme of the enemy. As I told you, when Galatian thing, Jewish people had a lot to say about scripture. From the scripture, law is given to us by Moses. Paul had to use the same scripture back and say, you know why law was given? It is not for a permanent thing. It was a custodian. It was a particular period of time. Sometimes it can happen. We can look at some verses and get puffed up. So it is my humble plea in the light of God's word and as a servant of God, 
as we finish our studies of Galatians, let's aim for unity in the body of Christ. Let's surrender our lives today and tell God, Lord, thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit. That is enough for me. Christ, you are not just an agent to save me. I am focusing on you for my life. Shame.